No minister in a generation has been given a more difficult task than this one, and you delivered. That's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau giving Foreign Affairs Minister Christian Freeland a big pat on the back for delivering the new NAFTA, the USMCA. Still getting used to that. The talks were tense. They did come down to the wire. We knew there was fierce debate over dairy, over autos, and over how disputes get resolved, but we didn't know that China, or more to the point, the U.S. focus on punishing China, would be on the table too. And trillions and trillions of dollars was taken out of the United States for the benefit of China. We just can't have that. We have to make it fair. We know Trump's White House is an all all out trade war with China. But now it's drawing Canada into that fight by inserting what U.S. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross calls a poison pill clause into the USMCA. Here's how it made it into the deal. I'm told that in the final few days of negotiations, Team Trump introduced Chapter 32, which in effect says if Canada signs a future trade agreement with China and the U.S. doesn't like it, they can kill the entire USMCA. The Chinese embassy in Ottawa says the chapter blatantly infringes on the country's sovereignty. That's our sovereignty. This puts Trudeau and future prime ministers in a bind. So we've seen Trudeau, he's been flirting with the Chinese trade deal for months now, all with the goal of lessening Canada's dependence on the U.S. Remember that awkward trade trip last December? Trudeau ended up leaving Beijing empty-handed, but still hopeful. Pleased that we'll continue our exploratory discussions toward a comprehensive trade agreement between Canada and China. And now, even after he signed Chapter 32, Trudeau says he still wants more trade with China. But have his hands been tied? We asked Foreign Minister Freeland to join us today, but she declined. We're joined now by Foreign Affairs critic Aaron O'Toole, he's in Yellowknife, and former Prime Minister Kim Campbell. Two conservatives with somewhat different views on this deal. Thank you both so much for joining us. Uh, because of this Chapter 32, the government has been accused of surrendering its sovereignty uh, to a bully. Is, th is that? How do you see this? It was quite surprising when it came out. We knew the U.S. had concerns with respect to the Trudeau government's treatment of China, but this blew everyone away because it's quite, quite unparalleled in a trade agreement. Do you see this, uh, Ms. Campbell, as unprecedented? I mean, you can get rid of an agreement any time. The U.S. can cancel any time with six months' notice. What do you think? I don't think it's nothing, but I think it's not all that significant. It's actually, I think, kind of subtle. I mean, it doesn't come right out and say China. And it doesn't say that you can't do it. It doesn't say that you can't do it and that it's an automatic uh, cancellation of the agreement. It says that they have the right to review the terms of the agreement that you would enter into in light of the North American agreement. And if they think that there's prejudice in some way, then it's fair enough to, uh, to cancel the agreement. So, Mr. O'Toole, how big a deal is this? I mean, if you were at the table, you know this came down to the wire. And if you wanted a deal, it was this, sign it or walk away, would you have walked away? Well, we would have taken the deal seriously last year. Had we a year ago, had we been talking security concerns alongside trade, those two things are, are viewed together in the United States, I think we wouldn't have been in the boat where we were in a take it or leave it situation for all of the things, let alone the Chinese provision in Article 32. We're going to run a clip of Vice President uh, Mike Pence. This is what he said just a couple of days ago. America had hoped that economic liberalization would bring China into a greater partnership with us and with the world. Instead, China has chosen economic aggression which has in turn emboldened its growing military. So, Kim Campbell, it really sounds like the U.S. is on much more hostile footing with China. Because of Clause 32, is Canada now uh, on a more hostile footing as well? Well, you know, I think those remarks by the vice president, and you know I'm not a big fan of that administration, I don't, I think Canada could make those same remarks. I mean, we had a lot of hopes uh, that China would become much more integrated into the Western economic system. I think what he's expressing about China is, is not a unique view to the United States at all. Well, I think it's at the very least making us take U.S. concerns seriously. They were seeing Canada as a less trusted partner, so clearly they've used the renegotiation of NAFTA to put constraints on what Canada can do. We weren't taking U.S. concerns seriously and then were forced into a corner to sign on to Article 32.